all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grinding NC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh. Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. Every season tips off with hope. And no matter what came before or what is yet to come, it is that hope that burns inside, that brings us to our feet, that says maybe, just maybe, the impossible might be possible. But only if you believe. It is a ride that is shared together. A season that will rise and fall with every shot. With every game. We are one. And we are true. Let no one stand in our way. Let no one take what is ours. Together, we will prevail. True to our team and true to ourselves. Hawks basketball. True to Atlanta. Yes, welcome to the Jr. the Boss Man Show. We have a great show for you today. This is a Jr. McHenry here with John Beckler, and on the line with us already top of the show, Atlanta Hawks CEO Steve Cohen. And Steve, how are you doing today? Good. Good morning. How are you guys? We're doing wonderful. And before we get started, Steve, I wanted to say thank you for coming out to the Mega Media Boot Camp. Uh, I tell you what, I really enjoyed listening to you on the panel with, with Mr. Rouse, and I learned a lot from you and from him. And a lot to help me and John out going forward. I just want to say thank you for that, taking the time out on Saturday to give your time to help guys like John and myself grow in his business. It's my pleasure. I enjoyed it myself. Yes, indeed. And to get to the Hawks, I tell you, they've enjoyed their best season on court since they've been in Atlanta. How great I found for this season for you after the firestorm that went on before the season, seeing how the guys fall through that stayed true to Atlanta and pushed through, got to the conference finals, played the Cavs real tough considering how injured the team was. So how great I found this whole year for you. Uh, I saw how far the Hawks came this year. Uh, it, it was incredibly gratifying. You know, whenever you accomplish a first, making the conference finals, winning 60 games, especially against pretty long odds, it, it, there's not much better feeling that you can possibly have. We um, all came together as a team, and we all rode in the right direction, and it paid great dividends. And Steve, I'm interested to know, as, as one of the leaders of the Hawks organization, what's your mindset and approach uh, to leadership and, and leading an organization, an organization of that size, um, especially, as Jared mentioned, through a few turbulent times that you had early in the year, and then you kind of you know, led them through and regained that trust of the city. What is it like to be able to do that? What's your mindset and approach and uh taking that accomplishment on? Well, I think you. the most important thing is you have to um, have guiding principles that you're going to operate by, and ours were to be transparent. Ours is to be over-communicate with each other, and ours is a big piece of trust. And being able to talk things through, and everybody has a voice, um, and giving people the freedom and the responsibility to bring their best self to work um, 
it's kind of the guiding principles we've operated by and we continue to operate by. And because of that, we had really strong people doing really great work, and the dividends um, were paid. And, you know, what I really liked what you guys did this year, Steve, was the true to Atlanta tagline and the hashtag and just the whole mantra, that true to Atlanta. And while it originally was advertising line, but it seemed like it became the team's fighting and, and cry, like we're true to Atlanta, the fans are true to Atlanta. And so with that being said, do you feel like that that actually helped accelerate the trust being regained with the fans of the city of Atlanta and just bringing more fans involved with that whole true to Atlanta being a true believer? So how, so we feel like those were successful in that regard? Yeah, I mean, it was a great guide for our compass. You know, does this make us true to Atlanta? Is this true to Atlanta? Does this reflect who we are as a city and as a culture? And we came up with the tagline, um, Peter Sorkoff and I sitting in my office, and it started as a tagline. Now it's become really um, the belief of where we are in the city. We are different. We're unique. And we're something that the city can rally around, and there's nothing that gives us more pride than that. Steve, something that I, I took a note of throughout the course of the season was, um, you know, the Hawks becoming known for that out-of-the-box promotion. Uh, I know you had pre-game, halftime, post-game concerts, Tinder night, you know, uh, take your boss a note if you're late to work, which was one of my favorites. As you move into next season and beyond, what can we expect as far as some of these out-of-the-box promotions? Are there going to be more of those to attract more of the oh, yeah. American Oh, yeah, that's part of our DNA. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, so I'm not going to tell you any because it's not time. <laughs> but our whole plan is to create surprise and delight, surprise and delight, to do things that haven't been done, do things that fans get excited about. So, yes, you will see lots of that from us. And, and it's become more of a – I mean, that that's – in all professional sports, over the it's been the evolution of it's more of a experience and entertainment part of it. You know, Jr. and I talk about ourselves as sports and entertainment. That's what we cover. You almost have to be in the sports and entertainment business now, do you not? Oh, we we are first of all in a legitimate definition of our business. Phillips Arena hosts 150 other entertainment events a year, from concerts to family shows, etc. Um. And it is key. Plus, you can be the biggest Hawks fan in the world and never walk into the arena because there's 81 great broadcasts on television. So to come into the arena has got to be an extraordinary experience. It makes you go through the expense and the, and the hassle that supersedes TV, and that's what we're aiming for. And, folks, we're joined by Steve Cooney, Atlanta Hawks CEO, right here on the Jared Boss Man Show. And, Steve, are there any plans to tap into markets in between Memphis, Charlie, and Orlando, such as Nashville, Knoxville, Birmingham, Montgomery, to make the Hawks more of a regional team, same way the Braves have branded themselves, all the Southeast is just Braves country. Do you want to try to take advantage of those, those pockets in between those three other NBA towns that where Atlanta has is very close to proximity to? Well, yes, we do, and our Fox Sports South footprint is actually the largest regional sports network footprint in the country going to 13 states. Now, Memphis doesn't get Hawks games, but Nashville and other markets do. And so, you know, we're developing fans, but truthfully, I want to focus on 100 miles of Atlanta and make sure we get that right before we we start expanding back out. Now, Steve, you know, recently it became official – um, that the Pac-Man will become the primary logo along with a, a new secondary logo. What's right. the process like in designing and determining a new primary and secondary logo? Do you, have you got feedback on that? And you know, it's, a very complex that process. Process. it's a very complex process. If you're going to do that, you have to – we had to turn everything in by September 1st, 2014, almost a full year before it became available. We worked with um, – a great design firm out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And we've come up with a whole look and new brand identity for the Hawks that we'll be sharing with the public really soon. And, Steve, another thing that John and I love about coming to the arena is entering in- 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 experiences. It's one of a kind with Ryan Cameron as the PA, the 3D boards you have, the straw lines, the handsome activities, big ticker DJing, Sir Foster on that organ is one of a kind. And it's already a top-notch presentation that you all have at Phillips Arena. 
If you see you guys even enhance it even more, maybe adding more restaurants to it, adding yourself to the club level. So what, what's your plans for the in the ring experience? When fans come, make it even better for them when they come to the to watch the, the Hawks play the next season. We're working on a long-term master plan that includes all of the things that you talked about. More food choices, more restaurant choices, more bar choices, more entertainment choices, more city seating choices. So we're working diligently on doing that over the next couple of years to make Phillips Arena a state-of-the-art arena. Chair and I have talked with uh, Dominique through the course of the past year, and, and that's something that impressed upon us how you all treat your alumni and how on any given night, you know, there's many of them you'll see in the arena. How important is it to you and the organization to keep your alumni in the fold and a part of what's going on with the organization? No, it's extraordinarily important. In fact, quite frankly, it had drifted, and our alumni were not part of our organization operation. And in my first year, that was one of our top goals, was to inculcate our alumni back into our organization. So John Conkak, Dominique Wilkins, Kevin Willis, um, on and on and on. Charlie Chris, these guys are the Kimbe. They're all part of the fabric that make the Atlanta Hawks. So we're actively working with them. We have quarterly luncheons. They are invited to all of our VIP events, and it's very, very important to us that our alumni are a big piece of what we do. And final question for you, Steve. The listeners are very interested in knowing this. A lot of emailed about this, so we want to ask you this question. What's a typical day like for you as the CEO of the Atlanta Hawks? Like, what's a typical day like for you like today, maybe? Go we'll interview with us for 15 minutes, then meeting. So what's, what's, just give us a little insight of what, what your day's like usually as a Hawks CEO. I'm getting ready to head to meetings in a few minutes, and then I have a 10.30 meeting. I have an 11 o'clock meeting. I have a lunch meeting with a reporter. I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 um, with basketball operations about the draft and free agency. And then I have a 6 o'clock marketing meeting, and then I get to go home, eat a little dinner, and watch the game tonight. Oh, I hear that. <laughs> I tell you what, Steve, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. We look forward to having you on again down the road, and thank you for your time this morning. Absolutely, guys. Thank you, and it was nice meeting you at the summit. Take care. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you so much. And, guys, okay. that was Steve Cohen, the Hawks CEO, right here on the Boston Man Show with John Beckler. And, folks, the moral of the story is that balance, teamwork, passing, and playing the right way are becoming vogue again. And I completely and totally underestimated the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. I, I'm a believer. I look at this team right now as I totally underestimated them. I did not see this coming. We all get caught up in talking about the system and the way and are selfish. They move the ball. What a bunch of great guys getting it done collectively. I think we're underselling the talent. If you're a Hawks fan, you've just got to be bursting with pride. This team has put the Atlanta Hawks franchise back on the map. There are four Atlanta Hawks on the court. Fans coming to Phillips Arena as echoes of the past have been awakened by the fantastic play of the Hawks. From the best team of the Eastern Conference winning a franchise record 60 games has brought the fans back. And we get ready for game one of this opening round series between the Brooklyn Nets and the Atlanta Hawks. Tonight, that's his fourth three. In the corner, Kyle Corbin, three-pointer, Kyle. Bang! Right up through the middle, DeMarie lays it up so good. Al Horford jams it. And the Hawks have taken the lead to five. The He's got it, and the Hawks have taken the lead. 74-73. Al gets it down to Damari Carroll. Back to Al, back to Damari. He lays it up and in. And the Hawks take the lead. 80-78. to 78. With 14 points. Right We're jumping around he like drives and lays it up good at Bluff. Rebound Al Horford. Al goes back up and in. He's going to take a 3-2 series lead. Al Horford, the boss. He got that rebound and put it up and in. The Atlanta Hawks will go to the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time in history. When the game was over, 
we couldn't get the post game interviews going because people were were going so crazy. I mean, that's special. You know, this this whole year, all the fans that came and really supported us from day one. I think the city really deserved this and they needed this. To me, I think I, we wouldn't even be here without our fans. So we give the, most of the credit to the fans, and we'll take secondary credit.